Hello, everyone. Thank you for your support and interest in prevalent arts. Because of you, the channel now has over 200 subscribers. The Affinity Tutorials put quite the boost on the traffic. I'm slowly working up there. For this video, you will notice that I am on a website called VectorTunes. That's because I use this site as a reference for my works. In the previous video in this playlist, I showed you how to create cartoon characters in Vector. Now I will try to find an easy solution for cartoon backgrounds. Let's take a look at the ones provided in VectorTunes. This picture of a baseball field may look difficult to draw at first, but if you look closely, it is really just made of basic shapes and gradients. But a neat trick I learned just from viewing this website on how to make backgrounds easily without it looking plain is to divide it into sections. The baseball field is in the foreground, and then moving backwards comes the sand, then the bleachers, then the darker grass, then the trees, then the mountains, then the sky. If different sections are added to a background, the plainness will not be easily noticed. In this drawing of the skater kids, you will see that it is also divided into sections. Furthermore, the buildings in the front look more real than the ones in the back. That is because the front is the focus, and the colors in the far back get lighter for the difference of contrast. If there was a night sky, then the buildings in the back would have to be dark. Now let's get into background creation. Something you should never do is trace other people's work. You can use them as references, but only for getting ideas. For this background, we will draw a forest. So where do we start? First, think about an angle. Will we be looking up, down, across, or what? For this, I will keep it simple and have a horizontal opening like in the Skater Kids picture. Before drawing, Map out your sections with the pixel tools. This front area will be grass. This next area will be darker grass. Then I will have bubbly bushes. Now I'll place some spiky bushes in the foreground. Behind the bubbly bushes will be trees separated from each other, showing openings in between. Above will be bubbly leaves of the trees. Now behind the trees, we will have a darker color of bubbly bushes, and we will stop there for now. I'll give this pixel layer a lock. Now notice how I divided the background into different sections. This is what makes a background image different sections. Now let's get into vector. I will have this layer be semi-transparent so I can see the basic blueprints. For the grass, I'll just have a square shape since the darker grass will be in front. For the darker grass, I will change my stroke pressure and draw several blades of grass. Now I expand those strokes and add them together. For the bottom, I want to have bubbly edges, so I'll use the circle tool and add them to the grass. For the bubbly bushes, we will have different circle shapes.
For the spiky bushes, I want these in a particular shape, so I will use the pencil tool with the stabilizer enabled. Now select all and join the curves. For the trees, I will use the pencil tool again. More circles for the leaves. For the bushes in the back, I will just copy and paste the ones in front and flip them. Now for the next background, I will copy all of these objects, paste them, and then set them behind and scale them accordingly. Finally, have another square with a darker color. And if you want to touch this up a little more, you can add gradients to each object. And to make it not so obvious that these are all basic shapes, you can create some open paths for interior stickouts. And you can take it a step further by giving those stickouts a tapered effect.